Good morning. Welcome in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ as we uh, gather today for the funeral service for Grandma Sonia. We begin with her opening sentences found in the bulletin. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, the source of all mercy and the God of all consolation. He comforts us in all our sorrows so that we can comfort others in their sorrows with the consolation we ourselves have received from God. Thanks be to God. When we were baptized in Christ Jesus, we are baptized into his death so that as Christ was raised from the dead by the glory of the Father, we too might live a new life. For if we've been united with him in a death like his, we shall certainly be united with him in a resurrection like his. Psalm 121. I lift up my eyes to the hills from where does my help come? My help comes from the Lord who made heaven and earth. He will not let your foot be moved. He who keeps you will not slumber. Behold, he who keeps Israel will neither slumber nor sleep. The Lord is your keeper. The Lord is your shade on your right hand. The sun shall not strike you by day, nor the moon by night. The Lord will keep you from all evil. He will keep your life. The Lord will keep your going out and your coming in from this time forth and forevermore. Glory be to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. We sing our first song. No more sorrow, no more pain. 
In the name of the Father who made us, and the Son who saves us, and the Holy Spirit who comforts us in our loss. Amen. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. O God of grace and mercy, we give thanks to you this day for your faithfulness to your servant Sonia. She has finished this course in faith and now rests from her labors in you. For all the blessings we receive through her life and friendship, we praise you. Now be our refuge and strength as we gather and live on in our pilgrimage. Give us your words of peace by which our fear is dispelled, our loneliness eased, and our hope reawakened through the one who died and rose again for us, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Psalm 23, spoken responsively. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not be in want. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside quiet waters. He restores my soul. He guides me in paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and thy staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil. My cup overflows. Surely goodness and love will follow me all the days of my life. And I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Amen. Our Old Testament text today is taken from Isaiah chapter 25 beginning at the sixth verse, and of course, with grandma, there has to be a feast. <laughs> On this mountain, the Lord of hosts will make for all peoples a feast of rich food, a feast of well-aged wine, of rich food full of marrow, of aged wine well refined. And he will swallow up on this mountain the covering that is cast over all peoples the veil that is spread over all nations. He will swallow up death forever. And the Lord God will wipe away tears from all faces. And the reproach of his people he will take away from all the earth. For the Lord has spoken. And it will be said on that day, Behold, this is our God. We have waited for him that he might save us. This is the Lord. 
We have waited for him. Let us be glad and rejoice in his salvation. Our New Testament text is taken from Revelation chapter 21, beginning at the first verse, and it captures what it'll be like in the resurrection. Then I saw a new heaven and a new earth, for the first heaven and the first earth had passed away, and the sea was no more. And I saw a holy city, New Jerusalem, coming down out of heaven from God, prepared as a bride adorned for her husband. And I heard a loud voice from the throne saying, Behold, the dwelling place of God is with man. He will dwell with them, and they will be his people. And God himself will be with them as their God. He will wipe away every tear from their eyes, and death shall be no more. Neither shall there be mourning, nor crying, nor pain anymore, for the former things have passed away. And he said, and he who was seated on the throne said, Behold, I am making all things new. And he said, Write this down, for these words are trustworthy and true. And he said to me, It is done. I am the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end. To the thirsty I will give from the spring of water of life without payment. The one who conquers will have this heritage. Now be as God, and he will be my son. This ends our New Testament text. Our Holy Gospel today is taken from St. John, the 14th chapter, beginning at the first verse. And grandma prepared her house for all her guests. Well, now her room was prepared for her. And she is with Christ our Lord. Let not your hearts be troubled. Believe in God. Believe also in me. In my Father's house are many rooms. If it were not so, would I have told you that I go to prepare a place for you? And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and take, will take you to myself, that where I am, you may be also. And you know the way to where I'm going. Thomas said to him, Lord, we do not know where you are going. How can we know the way? Jesus said to him, I am the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. And we sing our next song, Be Still My Soul. Still my soul. 
Be still, my soul. Be at this hastening of when we shall be forever with the Lord. When disappointment, grief, and fear are gone, sorrow forgot, love's purest joys restored. Be still, my soul, when change and tears are past, all safe and blessed, we shall meet at last. Sonia Ray Holdorf, born 725-1937, passed away 11-23-2020, preceded in death by her parents Clifford and Alice Hollistell, survived by her husband Arthur Holdorf, children Kevin and Dawn, Kurt and Kathy, Craig, Lisa, Carrie, Terry, 13 grandchildren plus spouses and significant others. 15 great grandchildren. Sister Gwen Hollistell, brother Clifford Hollistell and Marcia, many other relatives and friends. Sonia Holdorf thought she was ordinary, but to anyone who knew her, she was quite extraordinary. Oh, she was a fierce defender, empathizer. One could put counselor in there, hostess, cheerleader, problem solver, wonderful baker, listener, and a competitive card player, to name a few. Sonia had a gifting for making each person feel loved and valued. Her traits will live on through each person who was lucky enough to be loved by her. She, married, she was married to Arthur Holdorf for 63 years. She took great care of him, and together they were an example how to love each other through better or worse. They were two very different people who together made one amazing couple. Sonia was a beloved sister who always supported her siblings. She loved to make special treats that would remind them of their years growing up together. One of her greatest joys in life was being a mother. She supported her children in everything and encouraged them to follow their dreams she was so proud of them and their accomplishments. Being a grandmother was special to her. She was intentional on creating memories, making holidays special, even with little turkey decorations. 
and creating a place they could call home. She attended as many activities as she could and was very proud of each of her grandchildren. She cherished her great-grandchildren and loved to meet them for the first time. She loved to see them grow and watch their personalities bloom. And she kept adding pictures to her refrigerator. Sonia valued her friendships. She enjoyed time together, phone calls, lunches, shopping trips, and finding the perfect gifts for her friends. Memories were vastly important to her. That's why she couldn't let things leave the house. <laughs> Making memories brought her joy, and reminding others of those memories kept her relationship strong. Her faith and love for her family and friends made her extraordinary. We will treasure every memory we have had with her as we strive to love as she loved. Today's sermon for Grandma is entitled, At Thy Table. It is taken from our Old Testament text. So today we gather to celebrate the life of a very dearly beloved wife, mother, grandmother, great-grandmother, sister, and friend. In our gathering today, we celebrate the life of Sonia Holdorf. Today, though, our hearts are broken, possibly even shattered. They're deep emotions. Deep emotions. And there are reasons for these deep emotions. It's grandma. It's the life she lived and the impact she has had on every single one of us. She loved deeply, and she was deeply loved. So, dearly beloved family, friends, those watching on her live stream, especially to you, Grandpa, to you, Dad, Uncle Kurt, Uncle Craig, Aunt Carrie, grace, mercy, and peace be unto you from God our Father and our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. If you take a look at the bulletin, there is a reason why I picked this as the bulletin cover. You will realize that this is an all too familiar location for its grandma's dining room table. I look at this picture and I'm reminded of a lot of things. What are you reminded of? What comes to your mind when you see this picture? Is it laughter? Is it plates heaping with delicious food even though grandma thought her cooking was horrible? <laughs> and it wasn't. It was delicious. And how I will miss it. Is it the card games? Like hand and foot. What about Bunko screaming across the house? <laughs> Is it the memories made? Is it a, the whole lot of love that was poured out around that table? What floods back to your mind when you see the picture? Is it grandma standing at the kitchen sink, either doing dishes or finishing up her preparation for the meal? Is it the delightful smile on her face as she looks out across that dining room table and is delighted at seeing her family gathered? Is it the cups of coffee? The umpteen cups of coffee <laughs> that was drank around that table. She served her family well, beyond well, and she loved deeply. 
And a lot of memories were made around this table. A lot of times with grandma, with mom, with your spouse. Because each one of those memories is a moment in time that we can look back and cry and smile and cherish because grandma deeply loved us in those moments and we deeply loved her and we can cherish those moments all the days of our lives thanks be to God for her dining room table You know what's unbelievable? Is that through it all, throughout her entire life, from uh, July, if I count that right, 7th July, right? <laughs> 25th, 1937. All her days. Do you know who was tending her, serving her, caring for her and loving her? It was Jesus. You want to know why grandma loved so deeply? Because she was deeply loved by Jesus. And you can see that throughout her life. For I'm reminded of what the psalmist says in Psalm 139 verse 13. For you formed my inward parts. You knitted me together in my mother's womb. Oh yes, grandma was knitted, loved, and cherished by Jesus even then. And then on January 1st, uh, 1937, she was baptized. Don't ask me how I found those records. <laughs> but on that day, Jesus claimed Sonia Holdorf, or Sonia Hollistel, as his own. In the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, you are my child, and I have you in the palm of my hands, and I'm going to tend to you, I'm going to care for you, I'm going to love you all your days. And then she was confirmed May 1st, 1951, where she stood before God and man and professed her faith. She met Grandpa. I couldn't remember the story, so it's not in the sermon. <laughs> <laughs> but we saw the beautiful pictures. Gosh, she was classy, wasn't she? Very classy. And on, what's eight? September, August, August thank you. <laughs> August 24th, 1957, the two became one flesh. In sickness, and yes, there was that. Throughout the 63 years of marriage, There was a health as well. And sickness and health till death us do part. And I know, Grandpa, you loved her. And she loved you. And it was a beautiful witness of marriage to the rest of us. Thank you. Oh. Four kids. And I don't know how she wasn't grave sooner. <laughs> Some of them stories are wild. Thirteen, and she needed Jesus through them times. <laughs> Thirteen grandchildren plus spouses and fifteen great grandchildren. Did you know she taught Sunday school forever? And she served her church in many aspects, t tending not only to her family but to others so that they too can know Jesus and his love. Almighty God tending and caring, blessing her with a family that so dearly loved her.
We know that grandma did a lot of preparation before family, dusting things that didn't need to be dusted. (laughs) Cooked unbelievable stuff. And yet on November 23rd, her room was prepared. And it was time for her to rest from her labors. For Jesus says in our gospel text, let not your hearts be troubled. Believe in God. Believe also in me. In my Father's house are many rooms. If it were not so, would I have told you that I go and prepare a place for you? And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and take you to myself, that where I am you may be also. And so, yes, Grandma had to walk through the valley of the shadow of death. But do you know who was there tending her, caring for her, even though her family really couldn't be there? Thanks be to God, Grandpa could. Jesus. He was there. Reminding and saying, yes, this is the valley, the shadow. But I have given you life everlasting. And your room is prepared. It's time to come home. And home she went. For now she sits at a different table. A table that we will soon at some point sit there. But she sits with all the saints who have gone before. With Grandpa Max. Grandma Margaret. Grandma Alice. Grandpa Cliff and all others. For she now is sitting at Jesus' table. For in the psalm, it, he write, uh, the psalmist writes, you prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. Even death has no power with Christ. And that's why I chose our Old Testament text, because it's grandma and she would have a feast. But we see at Jesus' banquet table, it, there's going to be a feast of rich food, a feast of well-aged wine, of rich food full of marrow, of aged wine well refined. But then we're reminded of what Jesus does with death. And he will swallow up on this mountain the covering that is cast over all peoples, the veil that is spread over all nations. He will swallow up death forever. And the Lord God will wipe away every tears from all faces. And so Grandma sits at that table with all tears wiped away, knowing that death has no power or authority over her anymore. And she awaits the resurrection of all things where her grave will not keep her. Uh Uh-uh. She will rise to new life. Why? Because she's been baptized into Christ. Baptized into his death, but also baptized into his resurrection. And on that last day when the trumpet sounds and Christ shall come with acclamation, guess what? Grandma will rise. And all the saints and all who believe to new life. And we will join with what John says in Revelation chapter 21. Behold, the dwelling place of God is with man. He will dwell with them and they will be his people. And God himself will be with them as their God. And he will wipe away every tear from their eyes and death shall be no more. Neither shall there be mourning nor crying nor pain anymore for the former things have passed away. Can't wait for that day. And so today we take heart. Why? Because grandma's with Jesus. She rests from her labors. She's with all the saints who have gone before. And she can finally not worry. Thanks be to God for Jesus. For us, though, we must carry on. And we carry on with one less person at our table. And it hurts. And it's sad. And there's a hole 
has left. And we're going to wish we could call her just one more Monday or one more drive from home from work. And we're going to want to just stop over and say hi and have one more cup of coffee. And we may hear something on the radio or smell her perfume somehow, some way. And we're going to be reminded of Grandma because there's no forgetting. Why? Because she deeply loved. And she was deeply loved by us. And how do we move forward? It seems impossible at times. The grief seems to come in waves. How do we move forward with this deep hurt inside, with the tears that stream down our faces? Well, we move forward because we, of Jesus who as Jesus tended to her all her days, Jesus attends to you in the midst of the grief and the pain and the hurt. He is present. We all know the comfort of a mother, don't we? We do. Well, we're reminded in Isaiah chapter 66, verse 13, as one whom his mother comforts, so I will comfort you. That's God's promise. We're reminded in 2 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 3, Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of all mercies and the God of all comfort who comforts us in all our afflictions. Jesus is there to comfort you, and that's how we go forward. And so when you're up late missing your wife, guess who's going to be there for you? Jesus. When you're missing your mom, Guess who's going to be there to comfort? Jesus. When you're missing grandma, I wish you could just call her to actually figure out the recipe that she wrote down some time ago. Guess who's going to be there for you and for me? Jesus. And I know it's going to be hard come Christmas because she loved them holidays. She loved them frosted trees. I was thinking about the tinsel back in the day. I think there was, a, there was a little tree with a whole lot of tinsel. And we wish we could hear our, her voice just one more time. Guess who's going to be there? Jesus to bring comfort. And so today we can confidently say, we can, as it says here, let not your hearts be troubled. Because of Jesus who comforts. And he's going to comfort you each and every day of your lives. Even when you find yourself having to walk through the valley of the shadow, whenever that may be. And he will say to you, guess what? It's time to come home. For your table is prepared. Your room is prepared. I love what the psalmist says, even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. For you are with me. You rod and the staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil, my cup overflows. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. And because of Jesus, we shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever. With who? With all the saints. Grandma included. So at thy table, thanks be to God that Jesus' table will be prepared for us where we can feast and be with all the saints now and always. Amen. We now profess our faith with the Apostles' Creed found in the bulletin. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. 
He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. We pray. Almighty God, you have knit your chosen people together in one communion in the mystical body of your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Give to your whole church in heaven and on earth your light and your peace. Grant that all who have been baptized into Christ's death and resurrection may die to sin and rise to newness of life, and so pass with him through the gate of death and the grave to our joyful resurrection. Give to the family of Sonia Holdorf and to all who mourn comfort in their grief and assure confidence in your loving care, that casting all their sorrow on you, they may know the consolation of your love. Give courage and faith to the bereaved, that within the communion of your church, they may have strength to meet the days ahead in the assurance of a holy and certain hope and in the joyful expectation of eternal life with those they love who have departed in the faith. Help us, we pray, in the midst of things we cannot understand, to believe and find comfort in the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Receive our thanks for Sonia and for all the blessings you bestowed on her in this earthly life. Bring us at last to our heavenly home that with her we may see you face to face in the joys of paradise. O God of all grace, you sent your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, to bring life and immortality to light. We give you thanks that by his death he destroyed the power of death, and by his resurrection he opened the kingdom of heaven to all believers. Strengthen us in the confidence that because he lives we shall live also, and that neither death nor life nor thing, things present nor things to come will be able to separate us from your love, which is in Christ Jesus our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Taught by our Lord and trusting his promise, we are bold to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. And since the committal will be at a little, uh, another date, we'll do a little committal service now. May God the Father who created this body, may God the Son who by his blood redeemed this body, May God the Holy Spirit, who by holy baptism sanctified this body to be his temple, keep these remains to the day of the resurrection of all flesh. Amen. Amen. We pray. Almighty God, by the death of your Son, Jesus Christ, you destroyed death. By his rest in the tomb, you sanctified the graves of your saints. And by his bodily resurrection, you brought life and immortality to life, so that all who die in him abide in peace and hope. Receive our thanks for the victory over death and the grave that he won for us. Keep us in everlasting communion with all who wait for him on earth and with all in heaven who are with him. For he is the resurrection and the life, even Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Um, usually at a committal service, I would... Uh, share a few things, and I'd like to do that now. This will, when Grandma is buried, it will not be her final resting place. For she will rise, as Paul writes in 1 Corinthians and in 1 Thessalonians. And at a, at a committal service, I would share in this a gospel proclamation that you find at Easter, yeah, it's Alleluia, Christ is risen, he's risen indeed, Alleluia. And I want to do that now. It's fitting because Christ is risen, the grave is empty, and that means Grandma's grave will be empty. 
A dear friend of mine, a member of my church, she wrote on Facebook, Margaret, dear lady, she said, mourn the loss and cling to the alleluias. And she was referring to that gospel promise of alleluia, Christ is risen. He's risen indeed, alleluia. So uh, please join with me. I'll say the first part and you can respond with alleluia, Christ is risen. Or he is risen indeed, alleluia. Alleluia, Christ is risen. He is risen indeed, alleluia. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with his favor and grant you his peace. Amen. And we sing our final hymn.